Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. I don't have to tell you how important 3D printing is to amateur radio. Since I got my printer, I just use it every single week, uh, mostly to print cases, you know, insulators, uh, winders, and uh, things like that. This is a case. You can print coil forms. Uh, they are just, the possibilities are endless. And I, of course, also use it to print drone parts. I even printed a vacuum cleaner wheel for my parents. So <laughs> you just find things to print and that you need uh, all the time. So when I was uh, given the opportunity to review the LK4X, I didn't hesitate. It has a larger bed, so I can print bigger objects. Also, of course, uh, two is one and one is none. I would hate to be without a printer for even a week. Full disclosure, I did not pay for this printer. It was sent to me for review, but I am not receiving any compensation for uh, the work. I also am always impartial in my reviews. Let's see what's in the box. The uh, printer is well packed. It looks to be partially assembled, and I'll tell you that's very important. Power supply, connectors. All right, let's look at the rest. Oh, here's the, uh, the control head. Here's the part where the, uh, the printing head is. So apparently the only thing I have to do is to put this together with the other part and uh, that's about it. We have a little bit of uh, test filament, always nice. Uh, power cable, uh, that's a roller for the, uh, the spool of filaments. And of course the head, I showed it to you. We have a nice little tool here to remove the objects from the bed. And that's always nice because it's not always easy. Uh, we have tools, hardware. And uh, that is the uh, detector for if the filament runs out. The manual is a large sheet of paper, double-sided. And there are a lot of illustrations. I am discovering that there is an auto-leveling sensor, which is great. Mine doesn't have that, and uh, it's always a pain to level, so that's a very a good option. And also, there is a video that has all the instructions needed for uh, putting the printer together. This seems to be more complete than the uh, printed manual, actually. Let's look at the video. Very good. I think that uh, the front is here, so this has to go like so. Uh, it doesn't say anything about routing, uh, where to route the cables, so I'll have to figure that out. I think well, it's probably something like that. And uh, I just have to bolt that on and the uh, different accessories and uh, it'll be good to go. Hardware is labeled, always nice. I'm going to use a bit of uh, thread locker on this. It seems like you don't have to be an engineer to put this together, so... It's pretty obvious uh, where the connectors go. The auto leveling sensor seems to be uh, going right there. Here's the screen. So far there is really uh, no way that you can make a mistake. Uh, all the connectors are different so they go only in one place. I put the uh, filament holder in there and I'm going to screw on the, uh, the detector for the end of filament. If it runs out, it stops the printer. You know what? Actually, this bed is magnetic. That's pretty cool. Easier to uh, swap for a new one when it's worn out. The uh, end of filament detector cable, you have to make sure that you route properly. So it was on the outside here and it should have been uh, here and it will go under this part here and come out right there and go into this groove here so that uh, when the uh, printer the head goes down all the way down your cable isn't touching anything here and you hide the cable with the provided covers here so it's nice and tidy under the uh, power supply sticker here you can choose between uh, 115 and 230 volts mine is correctly set to 230 all right, here is what we call the uh, smoke test. <laughs> Let's see, this will be a surprise for you as well as for me. No smoke? Seems to be working fine. 
All right, now I need to find a place to store this and use it. I guess for this test uh, it will be on the floor. Let's do the leveling first. Touch screen, uh, automatic. Clean up bed and nozzle and ensure no material stick on them. Prepare a sheet of paper. Touch start button to get started. Okay. Place the paper below the nozzle, ok. Touch the Z arrow to lower the nozzle 1mm by 1mm, then 0.1 by 0.1 until you feel a friction on the paper. Oops, that's too much. 0.1. Ah, there's friction, slight friction here. What if I do one more? Yeah, that's about it. The offset calibration is done. Do you want to measure levelness now? Yes. This is so much easier to do than doing it manually. I put in the original filament that was in the box. There isn't much, but uh, probably enough to uh, print the uh, Banshee, which is a little boat that uh, has all the features that uh, challenges uh, printers so we'll see how that turns out. I will add that one uh, important aspect of this printer is that this is a direct drive so uh, it's better to print TPU. There is no tube where the uh, filament goes through and uh, is pushed through. It's, it's directly pulled pulled by the head here so uh, much, much better for TPU and uh, so <laughs> I can also use it for my drones. In the, uh, on the SD card, the uh, Cura profile for 4.12, so that's good. And for macOS, that's what I use, excellent. And we have uh, two G-code files here, or the Banshee, uh, we might want to print that for a test. Even a specific video on what to do to add the printer to Cura if it's not there, so I guess I'll do that instead. And uh, that should make things much easier. Uh, per the instructions, now I'm going to look for a uh, printer's ad printer, non network printer, and I look for longer. Here it is, and now, yep, it's there LK4X. Just click on add, and that should be it. Very good. To the longer, and uh, all the settings are correct. So I'm going to make my own print, which will show you how I do this. I uh, downloaded a Banshee file from uh, Thingiverse and that will go into the printer and I'm going to set my uh, quality here to 0.1 millimeter. The rest of the stuff uh, seems to be okay. Infill density 20%, that's good. I'm going to print this in PLA plus so I'll use 220 degrees. The plate temperature will be 75. Yeah, 75. Retraction, yes. Cooling, yes. I'll put uh, but 50%. Support. I don't know if the bench needs support. I always put uh, 47 for the support, and uh, still, that doesn't seem to be any needed anywhere. So. We'll just leave it at uh, no support and we'll print a, a skirt or brim. Let's print a skirt. 50 millimeters per second, that's good. And everything seems to be okay. I'm going to slice. Then I'll save the file onto the SD card and put it in the printer. Two hours, 48 minutes, save to disk. My apartment is so small, I don't have any space. Let's look at the files. Uh, Banshee, okay. And uh, selected, selected file, open. Start printing, yes. Okay. The bed uh, went up to 60 degrees Celsius and I can definitely feel the heat. It seems to be uh, checking itself, the height of the bed. Now it's going... All right.
nice print as good as I usually get so no problem there there was a little bit of uh, black filament left uh, that messed up the bottom but uh, the orange one uh, worked perfectly fine and uh, yeah happy with it this printer works just fine and the uh, auto leveling feature is really nice I have to say it's much easier to level than manually the bed is 23.5 centimeters across and that's only slightly uh, bigger than the one I already have. Of course, I can tell you how well it will hold up long term, but I haven't seen anything that would suggest that it wouldn't. Uh, it just seems to be uh, just fine. So I'll put the, uh, the link down below. Check it out. And uh, until next time, have a good one.